I'm Jessica with that hashtag show, and I'm here today with Kira O'Donnell, writer and director of the new film Marmalade. Uh, I had a lot of fun with Marmalade. Uh, I'm really excited for everyone to see this movie. I love that it exists in a sort of heightened reality. There's a story within a story coming from a very particular narrator. When you set out to write the film, was that sort of daydreamy element and the narrative framing always a part of the plan, or did you come to that later on? Always part of the plan. I think, you know, the influences of, of films that I that I loved growing up, you know, like the movies, of the late 80s and 90s, um, you know, big sort of pulpy, colorful films with stylized, um, but but with like really rich characters and, and fun twists, you know, anything with a heist or a. Uh, uh, you know, anything in the sort of Bonnie and Clyde genre of rooting for lovers on the run, you know, the, the, these were all things that I was aware of that I knew I wanted to sort of aim for. So it was kind of how can we meld all those things together and then and do our own uh, take on it. Definitely. Look, everybody loves a heist film, right? Hey, why not? I love them. I think so. Now, when we talk about transitioning from writing the script to actually shooting your script, do you have any moments from the film that stand out to you as being exactly what you first envisioned when you were writing or on the other side, something that you had to change up a lot because of the constrictions of shooting? Yeah, it's a great question. I, you know, I, I put together a lookbook with the script when I went out with it. So like I, I had very early ideas about how, you know, just, tonally and 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 the the color palettes we wanted to use and costumes everything else i sort of like had this book now when you look back at that now it's sort of it is it's amazing how much we stuck to that but of course locations are going to be different um you know uh casting is going to be different than you thought or whatever else it is so it is always kind of it's trying to keep your vision but also rolling with the punches a little bit so um yeah, I, I mean, we shot the whole movie in Minnesota, um, which which I didn't think, you know, the movie sort of takes place in the unknown South somewhere. Uh, but one of my producers had brought up Minnesota as an option and we went and looked at it and it was like amazing. We just needed these small towns. And um, there was just so many great options that we uh, we decided to go with that. And that that's certainly like heightened sort of a lot of the locations that that were on the page originally. It does have that that small town feel of it could be anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Great, great. Like, I, you know, again, like that sort of whimsical, weird sort of like fable like quality. It was sort of perfect that we ended up not shooting in the South because it's like, is this the South? Does it look where are we exactly? You know, it's a little bit more lush and kind of, you know, but but it could be it could be sort of anywhere, which is exactly what we wanted, you know. Now, this film is also your directorial debut, but you've spent a lot of time in front of the camera as an actor. So what did you learn about receiving direction as an actor that you then took on and sort of tried to incorporate when you became a director yourself for Marmalade? Yeah, I mean, it was a major advantage, right, that I've had 20 plus years being on sets and working with a wide you know, variety of, of directors from legends like Clint Eastwood all the way down to like first time directors. So I, you know, I I had no great designs to be to be a, a director from early on, but when I started writing this film, I just fell in love with the world and the characters, and I was like, God, I just feel like I know it so well, and then it was just about, yeah, taking little tidbits that I'd learned along the way from uh, great directors and from other actors as well, you know, seeing other people's processes throughout the years, it's kind of like, oh, that's interesting, I might like steal a little bit of that or, you know, kind of utilize that, so it all sort of went into the same melting pot and was, um, you know, sort of ingrained in me, but also it was, it was fascinating to, to find moments where I could, you know, bring things to light that where I was like, oh, I remember this one director who used to do that thing and I can do that now, you know? I mean, you know, the advantage is I think a lot of first time directors who weren't previously actors either have a fear of working with actors or don't quite understand that, you know, the language and stuff. So that to me was very secondhand. It's just understanding each person's different process. What works for this person might not work for this person. So it was kind of learning that very early on, but that that came very um, second nature to me. So that was, um, that, that was helpful. Absolutely. All right, last one for you. Why should everybody watch Marmalade? 
Oh, gosh. I mean, because it's great. No, because uh, it's just a really fun escapist ride, you know, and I think it's going to have a lot more twists and turns than than people uh, can possibly imagine. Absolutely. I, I've seen it and I would agree with that. I think it's a uh, great fun and had a lot of surprises that Thanks. I was excited by. All right. Awesome. Thank you.